this chapter is entitled DNA, Proteins, and the Cell Cycle. And we're going to really get into the nitty gritty of what happens with the DNA in the cell. And we've already talked about how um, DNA carries all the instructions that are needed for life. And the main way that that is carried out is when the DNA codes for certain proteins to be manufactured. So basically, the DNA is going to have two specific tasks. The first task is that within the cell, it has to code for protein synthesis to make certain um, specific types of proteins so that the cell can do all the things that it needs to do to maintain life. The second task is that when the cell divides to provide for growth, that DNA has to be duplicated so that each cell gets its own copy. And so that's what we're going to spend this chapter talking about. And we're going to start with the first of these tasks, um, which is the protein synthesis. Now, DNA is in the nucleus and DNA cannot leave the nucleus. But protein synthesis happens where? Do you remember when we talked about all of the different organelles in the cell? Which organelle was it that manufactures the proteins? Well, hopefully you remember that it's the ribosome. Well, if DNA codes for the protein and the ribosomes make the protein, but the DNA can't go out to the protein because it's stuck in the nucleus, what are you going to do about that? Well, you're going to have to have a little extra help. And that's where you have to have um, another molecule called RNA. And it, with your reading today, I had given you a chart and I said, fill this in to see if you understand the difference between RNA and DNA. So we're going to go through that chart up here and I want you to check yours as you're looking through it uh, to make sure that you have it right. So you recall that um, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So a DNA is going to contain sugar and phosphate group and then the nitrogenous bases. So the sugar that is contained between RNA and DNA is a little bit different. And in fact, it differs by only one oxygen atom. And so in RNA, it's called ribose. And in DNA, it's called deoxyribose. Deoxy means that we're going to take away one oxygen. Okay, so there's the, the R for RNA comes from ribose and the D for DNA comes from deoxyribose. So the sugars are different. RNA is made up of only one strand where DNA is made up of two. We had talked about in an earlier chapter how DNA has two strands, then they are twisted together into a double helix shape, okay? So difference in the number of strands, and the reason for that is because it's a, it's a key to how RNA works. RNA only needs one strand. Um, there are also some differences in the nucleotide bases that are used. DNA, as you already know, uses cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thymine. And we already talked about how those bases pair up very specifically with one another. But in an RNA strand, while I still have cytosine, guanine, and adenine, in place of thymine, I have a uracil instead. Um, just as thymine pairs with adenine, um, uracil is going to pair with adenine. And so basically, ur uracil and thymine are very, very similar to each other. But in RNA, you're going to find uracil, where in DNA, you're going to find thymine. Um, there are actually three different types of RNA. You have mRNA, M stands for, for messenger, and we'll talk about what that means here. Um, tomorrow we're going to learn about how um, there's also called a tRNA, which is transfer RNA, and then we have an rRNA, which is ribosomal RNA. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this, and we're going to focus mo mostly on these two. DNA, there's just one, one kind, just plain old DNA. Right? And then the stability of the two molecules is a little bit different. Um, DNA codes for all the proteins in a cell because it's, it's very, very stable, whereas RNA is, a, is slightly more, it's an unstable molecule. And so those are the differences between RNA and DNA. So you want to make sure that um, you get your chart filled in and make sure that it's correct. All right. Now, what I said was what we're talking about is this particular task right here, the protein synthesis within the cell. And so I love colors um, and I, I love, you know, showing you things with almost like puzzle pieces is how this is going to fit together. So while this, you're, you're going to be able, you could go on YouTube and you could find some more complicated um, pictures and drawings and animations of how this works. 
while this is simplified, sometimes I think when we simplify it, it can make things a little easier to understand. So, first of all, you need to understand um, that this protein synthesis happens in two steps. And the first step, which is what, which is what we're going to talk about today, is called transcription. And it takes place in the nucleus. So everything that we talk about today is going to happen in the nucleus of the atom. Of the atom. How the cell. I'm, I've switched to chemistry somehow. So in the nucleus of the cell is where your DNA is. And this is to represent over here a portion of a DNA strand. Now, a DNA strand is really, really long. And this is just a small piece of it. So you have to imagine with me that this DNA strand is going to continue way on up to the ceiling and it's going to this the bottom part's going to go way on over to the floor and it's going to curve all around all over the place all over the room it's really long this is just a very small piece of this very long DNA strand now you'll notice as we had already talked about before that whenever i have a thymine it's paired with an adenine so here if i have an an adenine it's paired with a thymine so you can see three places there where adenines and thymines are hooked together. And you can also see that cytosines are always paired with guanines. And those, those two are always paired together. All right. So when the cell needs to make a certain protein, the portion of the DNA that codes for that protein actually unzips. Um, and so when it unzips, it just kind of pulls itself apart like that. Now, the whole thing does not remember. We've got lots more DNA going on up here, lots more DNA down here, and all of it doesn't unzip. It's just this little portion here that needs to be unzipped. So once I've unzipped it, then I have some um, lone nucleotide bases that are roaming around in the nucleus, and they're going to come in and they're going to pair up with one side of the DNA so that we can make a copy of it. Now, it's not an actual copy, it's more like a negative image copy, but you'll see how that's going to work in coding for a protein. So, if I have a thymine, what does that pair with? Well, that's got to pair with an adenine. So I'm gonna to have to go out here in my cell someplace and I've got to find an adenine and I'm gonna bring it over and I'm gonna pair it with that thymine. What's gonna pair with the cytosine? Uh, guanine is going to pair with that. So I'm going to go out into the nucleus and I'm going to pull out another guanine and, and pair those together. Then I have two guanines and I have to pair those up with two cytosines like this. Uh, I have an adenine, which um, remember that in RNA, an adenine doesn't pair with a thymine, it pairs with a uracil. And you can see by the way I've got this represented. The uracil and the thymine look very, very similar. They just have different letters on them, okay? And then my thymine is going to pair with an adenine. Now, when you put these together, you're then going to have um, an RNA polymerase that's gonna go through and it's going to bind the sugar of one of these to the phosphate of the next one. Because remember, RNA contains sugars and uh, sugar and a phosphate and then the nucleotide base. So you're gonna have an enzyme that's gonna come through and it's gonna hook all these guys together. Now, for our purposes, uh, we're gonna use scotch tape because um, that's the best way that we're gonna be able to hook these guys together. So we're gonna hook these together like this. But you have to use your imagination and pretend that that's actually RNA polymerase that's hooking those together. So we're going to hook those together like this and got a couple more pieces that we need to get on here. All right, so I have my RNA strand now all bonded together. The sugars and phosphates are bonded together. And so now that they're bonded together, this is going to be able to move away from here after we unstick it from the board. So here's my RNA strand. And then this portion of the DNA strand will zip back up just like it was before, okay? Now, how can I tell the difference that this one is um, RNA and this one is DNA? Well, remember, DNA has thymine and RNA has uracil in it. So this particular strand is mRNA because it is the messenger. 
and it is going to take this sequence of nucleotide bases, which is going to code for an amino acid. It's going to take that out of the nucleus and it's going to take it into the ribosome so that it can code for the acids and then make the protein. And we'll talk about tomorrow about exactly how that happens. Now, there is another process that happens in here, which I did not try to, um, to represent with my you know, construction paper and scotch tape. Um, there are actually parts of an, e, um, of an mRNA strand called introns and exons. And when the mRNA is made, the proteins do not need the introns. That's extra information that's not needed for protein synthesis. It's information that's needed because God doesn't make junk. He doesn't put stuff um, into the cells that they don't need for something. Scientists are still learning a lot about what all of those introns are for, and they've started to unlock some of those mysteries. But as far as what we're concerned in, uh, for the introns are not needed, and so the introns are removed, and it leaves the exons only, and that's called RNA splicing. And there's, you'll see a diagram in your book where they have pulled out um, all of the introns and then spliced together the exons. All the coding is still there. It's some other extra little pieces that they that are taken out that aren't needed to code for the protein. So then this RNA, messenger RNA, is going to move to the ribosome, and we will talk about the second step of this process tomorrow.